Hey everyone, this is Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. Father's Day is coming right around the corner. So in this video, we're going to be using the Glowforge to make a couple Father's Day projects. So the first thing that we're doing are uh, these keychains. Now I made these in a Facebook Live the other week, but we have a saw that says you're the best dad I ever saw. And then I also have measuring tape. Dad, you're loved beyond measure. Now these are my prototypes. I'm actually going to be remaking these with birch and I'm going to stain them to make them look a little bit better. Now, if you're interested in these files, I will be offering these files for sale on my website. So check the description below. I'm also going to link the hardware that I use for this. Um, this is hardware that I get from Craft Chameleon. They have a lot of great stuff. And then, boom, we have a custom hammer. Now, if you are a vinyl crafter, silhouette user, these are not new. Uh, we have been doing these with vinyl for quite some time. But what I did is I used my Glowforge to etch this on here. Now, one thing that I like about that is that the etching is actually in the wood. So I've seen on occasion customers get upset about these when you do vinyl because they say you just put a sticker on that where you and I know that that's not necessarily what it is. But if this is a hammer that dad will be using, having something engraved as opposed to a, a decal is a little bit better. So I'm gonna be setting this up and then we are gonna be doing this with our Glowforge. So if you're watching this and you haven't gotten a Glowforge yet, make sure you check out the link in my description. I'll show you how you can save up to $500 on a brand new Glowforge machine. And if you are watching and you are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I'm putting out new videos all the time for your Glowforge and Silhouette and I would love to have you around. So I'm going to very quickly go over the designs that I'm sending over to Glowforge. Um, the uh, keychains are going to have three functions. I'm going to cut the overall shape out. I'm going to score the look of the tool and then I will be engraving the words on there. And so the way that you do that, let me zoom in a little bit more, is each function Sorry, I hit my microphone. Each function has a different line color in Silhouette Studio. So you'll notice this red is where it's going to cut. This gray is my score line, and then my text has a green line around it. So I used a basic stencil font, and then what I did right here for this uh, measuring tape is I actually did a small offset from my text and subtracted it from this part of my design. Now, um, you can look up some different videos on that. Basically, what I did is I released the compound path on this tool, made these two lines a compound path so that I was only subtracting from those two, and then grouped it again. Now I'm gonna have these files on my website, so if you do want these files, you can go and buy them on my website. So once I had that all done, all I had to do is I'm using Silhouette Studio Business Edition. You're just going to select it by going File, Save Selection, Save the Hard Drive. And then once you do that, you just wanna choose SVG down here, and then you're all set. So that's what I did for the first one. And then my last one, I have my different testing that I've done for my hammer. So I've already cut out or engraved, Dad, I love building memories with you. And then this next one I'm going to do when it comes to being a dad, you nailed it. So I'm this, it's the same process. I'm gonna grab this, save selection, and then save it as an SVG. So I'm gonna go ahead, finish saving these, and then I'm gonna see you in just a second when I bring it into my Glowforge app. All right, so I have my Glowforge open. You can see that this is the birch that I cut before. Um, typically, you wanna put a masking on here, but I am actually going to be sanding this to stain it to make it smooth, and that'll help take some of that uh, charring off. So I'm just gonna leave it because that process is going to happen anyway. So I just need to go ahead and bring in my artwork. So these are my keychains. So you're gonna see it's going to process. And once this opens, we're gonna see three different functions that can happen on the other side. So you can see enter settings. So you can see we have this right here. So I need to cut, score, and engrave. So here is my text. I need to engrave that. So I'm gonna choose engrave. And I've already tested my settings before, which are birch. But you can see I'm gonna do my speed at 400, my precision power at 50. I'm gonna do 270 lines per inch and just one pass. Right here, this is the design. You'll see I wanna do score, and I've saved birch in there as well. That, I'm doing 200 speed and precision power 15, which is basically how powerful. Since it's just scoring, I'm gonna do a low number. And then settings to cut, birch. And so I'm doing speed at 200 and full power. Now you want to go ahead and do tests to make sure it works best for you. 
everyone's machine it will probably have a little bit of a variance so make sure you are doing that all right so now i'm just going to put these in here to kind of find my best fitting so let's go ahead bring this down here and i'm actually just going to work towards the bottom all right so we have those over here we're going to select my material so we're going to go over and set my focus so whenever you're not using a proof grade material, you need to tell the, the Glowforge to check how far away it is. So it's setting the focus of our um, camera and then this will help us figure out a better spot to place it to cut it. So this will just take a second to focus. All right, so you see it shifted just a little bit because of the focus. So I'm just gonna kind of nudge this up a tiny bit with my arrows and now we're ready to cut. So let's go ahead, press print because this is a 3D cutter basically meaning that you can do 3D looking images or you're cutting all the way through. So it's going to prepare and then it's gonna take two minutes and 53 seconds. So I'm gonna flip my camera over so you can see it and then we'll have a finished product. All right, here we go. So let's go ahead, bring this gate down. You can see here are two keychains. This came right up, so it cut straight through, which is good. And now you can see those holes came right out. So a little bit of charring, no big deal. Um, I am going to sand that out. You can also use denatured alcohol and it'll take it right out. Typically that's what I do, but this wood is still like a tiny bit rough and I want it to be super smooth. So after that, I'm just gonna go ahead, stain this and put my keychain on. But this is the basic of making a cute keychain. So I love this for Father's Day. This is something where you can just sell this and include like Father's Day 2020 on the back or include a name customization. You can also just do a quick upcharge, like a dollar to put your name or 50 cents to put your name. So really cute, lots of fun and let's go and set up for our hammer. All right, so here we are right here. Now our hammer, I use my calipers, it's about an inch thick. So that becomes an issue because that will actually be too high to engrave with the crumb tray. So we are going to take out the crumb tray by gently lifting and sliding it out so we don't hit the lens carrier. Let's go ahead, bring it this way. You probably won't lift it as awkward because you don't have a camera right in front. And I'm just gonna set this over to the side. So here's the other issue. Our crumb tray, mine is about an inch and a half high. So I need to be able to lift my hammer to still be high enough to engrave. It still has to be at about an inch and a half high. Uh, you have about two inches. So what I like to do is everyone's got their way of stacking things. I have these two little boards these are like old, old from Target Dollar Spot when they had Valentine's Day, but they're really great for propping up and they have like enough space to really lift it. So I'm gonna put this a little bit to the side because the weight of my hammer is gonna go right here. And then I also just want to put something underneath that to help prop it up. My camera just died. But anyway, we have it right here. The weight of the hammer needs to go right there. And so I saw on um, a lot of Glowforge groups that some people use Legos to stack up their design because it's, you know, perfect measurement. So I'm just using Legos to prop underneath the bottom of this just to keep it steady as we go. So again, I've removed the crumb tray. We're gonna go ahead, close this up. And so now I'm gonna jump back over to the software to show you how I line it up. All right, so we have our hammer in here. You'll see, there it is. This is an old uh, text that I did before. I actually did another line that I want to do. So we're gonna go over here, we're going to upload, and we have hammer two, which is the second phrase that I'm doing. So this is bringing in my design. So you'll see over on the left side, we'll have two settings right here. So here's my, I love building memories with you. So we're gonna go right here. We're going to ignore it. So that way nothing happens. We can keep this in here for working on later. And then we can choose our settings for this one. So I went ahead and put some in for hammer. What I did before is I did my speed at a thousand. I did full power and I did 340 lines per inch because I wanted it to be more detailed. So before I go anymore, I wanna set the focus on here because the hammer is raised quite a bit. 
So I want to make sure I'm setting up my design to really uh, align well with my hammer. I'm going to resize it off of that. So we're going to let this focus. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to kind of resize this. I have somewhat of an idea of how large to make it because I have my other line from earlier. So you can see when it comes to being a dad, you nailed it. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. So let's start with this to see how it looks. It's still focusing. You can see right there. All right, so you can see it really shifted. So I wanna make it just a tiny bit smaller to give myself a little bit of leeway. So when it comes to being a dad, you nailed it. And now I'm using my arrow to nudge it down. I've noticed with my previous engraves, it does engrave a tiny bit higher than I expect because of the curve of the hammer. So I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit. We have it set up like that. So I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go ahead, hit print. We're gonna let this process and then you know the drill. I'm gonna jump over to my other camera so you can see it engrave. Okay. So we have our hammer here. Now you can see there's a little bit of charring near it. Not a big deal for something like this. I just have a baby wipe and I'm just gently wiping this off. Because this hammer has like a, uh, like almost a poly coating to it, the charring comes right off. Whereas that plywood, that birch plywood, I will have to sand a little bit just because it is a little bit rough. So there we have it, our etched hammer. All right guys, those are my final projects. We have our keychains and etched hammers. I'm really, really excited about them. I think that they turned out really nice. Dad, I love building memories with you. And when it comes to a dad, you nailed it. So again, this is a great, easy, basic Glowforge project that you can work on. If you are selling your items, these sell like hotcakes in my area, so I think you'll, you'll really enjoy them. It's a fun custom gift that you can give for Father's Day that isn't just a simple t-shirt. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I'd love to see you part of my little family. And if you like this video and you still don't have a Glowforge, make sure you check the link in the description below on how you can save up to $500 on a new Glowforge.